Hi, my name is Cindy Lee, and I'd like to tell you about the work that we've been doing on BARD 1 at The Ohio State University. BARD 1 is the heterodimeric partner of BRCA1, a breast cancer susceptibility gene. Mutations in BRCA1 and BRCA2 confer a 50 to 85% lifetime risk of hereditary breast cancer and 15 to 40% lifetime risk of hereditary ovarian cancer. As penetrant as these mutations are, however, they only account for about 20% of familial breast cancer. So researchers have started looking at other genes in these BRCA pathways to see what could be accounting for the missing heritability. As sequencing technology has become more affordable, we've been able to start looking at these other possible susceptibility genes. Patients can now opt to sequence a panel of 25 genes to see if they have any variants in their DNA sequences. We now have a multitude of inf information on these genes, but we don't necessarily know what the variants that we're finding could mean. Some variants could be neutral and some variants could be pathogenic. Now, BRCA1 mutations have been measured in a variety of cellular functions and the ones that are not able to perform homology-directed repair of DNA double-strand breaks have also been found to be pathogenic. So, we decided to measure its dimerization partner, BAR1, in the same way, in homology-directed repair. Using a HeLa-derived cell line with a stable, non-functioning GFP construct and a donor GFP sequence, we depleted endogenous BARD1, expressed wild-type or a missense substitution BARD1, and induced a double-strand break using ISCE1. The 29 missense substitutions we tested were variants of unknown significance found from breast cancer patient sequencing. These variants spanned the length of the BARD1 protein. If the BARD1 variant functioned in homology-directed repair, the cell would express GFP. If, however, the BARD1 variant did not function in homology-directed repair, the cell would have to resort to error-prone repair and would not express GFP. We counted the cells using flow cytometry. The variants could be classified into three categories, functional, intermediate, and defective. The functional variants performed similarly to wild-type BARD1, while the defective variants were non-functional in homology-directed repair, like our empty vector. Intermediate variants were statistically different from both wild-type BARD1 and empty. In this 3D structure of the heterodimer, the ring domain of BARD1 is shown in blue, while the ring domain of BRCA1 is shown in pink. You'll notice that crucial BARD1 residues for homology-directed repair coordinate zinc ions or are along the interface with BRCA1 and when these residues were altered, cells could not perform homology-directed repair. Our strategy can be used to test many more BARD1 variants that have been found in gene sequencing of the population. In this study, we've developed a tissue culture-based method for analyzing variants of unknown significance. We hope that our results will be combined with family history so that patients and their physicians can make a more informed decision about their health care. You can find our full paper in Human Mutation. The study was done by Cindy Lee, Tapashima Banerjee, Jessica Gillespie, Amanda Saravolo, Matthew R. Parvin-Smith, Leah M. Starita, Stanley Fields, Amanda E. Toland, and Jeffrey D. Parvin. It was funded by the Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center Molecular Biology Cancer Genetics Program.